Shall we praise the Lord? Bless be to God. It is another day to give God thanks. It is another day to give Him praise and to give Him glory. I want you to understand that in spite of the pandemic, the COVID-19 that is going on around us and around the world, uh, be not afraid, be not dismayed. Because God promised in his word that he will, he will strengthen us, he will uphold us with his right hand of righteousness. We understand the times that we're living in, but the, the Bible must be fulfilled. And I just want to encourage each and every one that is listening to my voice at this time. Be encouraged. Take hold of the word of God. Trust him with all your heart and lean not on to your own understanding. But let me remind you very quickly that in all your ways, just acknowledge him. And of course, he will direct your path. Today, I want to share with you a word that is on my heart, and I hope you will be blessed by the time I'm through. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we look to you by faith. God, we understand that we can do nothing of our own. God, it's all about you, God. We pray even now, God, that, Lord, your, your anointing will come upon me and make the difference as I, as I share the word of God with your people. Father, I know that it's not by my might, it's not by power, and it's, uh, it's only by the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, right now I call upon thee, my help of my source, O oh God, my strength, Father, in this hour, God, bless your people, edify them, and take all the glory and all the praise and all the honor. We tell you thanks in Jesus' name, and everybody says, Amen. Amen. I want you to turn your Bibles with me to the book of Genesis chapter 41 and verse 41. We're, we're just going to read one verse. I may go on a couple other verses, but my main focus to, to, today is on verse 41. And it reads, So Pharaoh commissioned Joseph, I am putting you in charge of the entire country of Egypt. And let me just run on down to verse 42, 43. Then Pharaoh removed his signet ring from his finger and slipped it on Joseph's hand. He, he outfitted him in robes of the best linen and put gold chain around his neck. He put the, se he put the second in command chariot as it, at his disposal. And as he rode, people shouted, bravo, Joseph was in charge of the entire country of Egypt. And I'll stop at verse 44. And Pharaoh told Joseph, I am Pharaoh, but no one in Egypt will make a single move without your stamp of approval. Tonight, let me just talk to you very briefly, very quickly, under the theme, Destined for Greatness. Destined for Greatness. Growing up, I had many fair share of why. And why not? I have many, many fear of why and why not questions. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Why was I treated worse than the other children? Why at the age of 17, I was molested repeatedly over and over. And when I said molested, I mean I was sexually molested, not once, not twice, over and over. Praise be to God. Praise be to God. I'm going to pause. Why was I not liked? Why was I not better off than others? Why did I have to grow, to grow up poor? Why do I have to struggle? Oh, my God. So many whys and so many why not. So many questions at the back of my mind. But of course, some questions do not bother me anymore. Like why I had to go to church while my other siblings stayed at home. Some questions refused to go away. Why did my father, why did my father didn't tell my mother the truth? Why did he left us? Oh my God, at such younger age, at such young age, why did I have to suffer the consequences of life? Again, so many whys and so many why not questions ponders my thought every now and then. But life is like a crystal ball, a fortune cookie or a psychic outline. Not all questions have an answer and not all answers are satisfactory. Further not, 
All questions are not worth asking and not all answers are worth knowing. It's just the way of life. Sometimes secrets are better left buried. History is better left undisturbed. And questions are better left unanswered. They are better off known to God, taken to God, and left to God. Can I say that one more time to somebody who are listening, who is listening to me on this day? That there are some questions and some answers that are better left off known to God, taken to God, and left to God. A song says many things about tomorrow that I don't seem to understand, but I know who holds the future, and I know who holds my hand. If you love that song, I want you to just give him a praise today in the house of God. Many, 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 many things about to the tomorrow I, I, I really don't seem to understand, but can I tell you that? That I know who holds my future and I definitely know who holds my hand. Joseph did not know why he experienced so many heartaches, so many misunderstandings and garbage in life. Nothing made sense. Everything went wrong and something was amiss. However, the Bible said he did not think negatively. He did not envy, he did not envy or blame God throughout his ordeal. Praise God. But instead, his faith in God was strengthened. Hallelujah. His belief in humanity was genuine and his patience was rewarded. Can somebody clap their hands and give the what Lord What do you praise? do when you feel like life is passing you by? What, how do you feel when it seems as if life is throwing you a lemon and spiraling out of control? What if, if, what, what if you do not find help? Understand deliverance or relief today, tomorrow or soon. What if things are unclear, unconvincing or uncomfortable? What is true when things change? Time flies and people disappoint as always they do. What do you do under these circumstances? I know it's very hard. And oftentimes I say my upbringing was very challenging. Ah, some good memories and some bad memories. But today, as I said, I understand it all. Today I know that my Redeemer lives. And today I know that God had a plan and a purpose. Chapter 40 ends on a depressing note. Yet not the chief butler, the Bible said, remember Joseph, but forget him. I want you to know that I'm going backwards in order to go forward. And I know that many of you know this story well. I know many of you know it inside, outside. The problem is because we are so familiar with it, we went, we want to rush it to the very end. But in this very familiar Old Testament story is one simple truth that has rev revolutionized the routine, boring day of any given individual. So I don't want you to rush me. I want you to take, I want to take my time. So that I can bring to light that which I want you to understand. Somebody give God a praise. Somebody bless his holy name. Somebody worship him, worship him, worship him tonight. Worship him. Glory be to God. As I said before, that chapter 40 ends on a depressing note. Yet did not the chief butler remember Joseph. But the Bible clearly states that he forgot him. In chapter 41, it doesn't start out much better either. It says, and it came to pass at the end of two years. Joseph's life to this point has been a little more than trouble. He has been hated, abused, and abandoned. But through all this uh, were been, through all this were he has been reminded that 
the Lord was with him. The Bible said the butler and everyone else may have forgotten him, but God did not forget Joseph at all. Come on, somebody, I pause here to tell you that throughout your, your, your rough time, and your challenging period, you may think that God has forgotten you, but I stop by to encourage you to hold on to God's unchanging hand because he promises in his words that he will never leave you, neither will he forsake you. And so it came to pass at the end of two full years, the Bible said Pharaoh had a dream. Tell your neighbor, I got a dream. And behold, the dream says, he stood by the river, and behold, there came up out of the river seven well-favored kind and fat-fledged, fat-fleshed. And they fed in a, in a meadow, and behold, seven other kind came up after them out of the river, all favor and lean-fleshed, and stood by the other kind upon the brink of the river. And the ill-favored and lean flesh kind did eat up the seven well-favored and fat kind. So Pharaoh awoke and he slept and dreamed the second time. And been all seven years of corn came up, up on one stock, on one stock rank and good. And be all seven thin years and blasted with the east wind sprung up after him. And the seven thin years devoured the seven rank and full years. And Pharaoh awoke, and behold, it was a dream. And it came to pass in the morning that, the, that, that Pharaoh's spirit was troubled, according to the word of God. And he said, call all the magicians of Egypt. Uh, come on, somebody, tell them, there comes a time magician can't do this thing. And all the wise men thereof, the Bible says, Pharaoh called them. And Pharaoh told them his dream, but there was none that could interpret them unto Pharaoh. Tell somebody, my name is about to be called, and everything that concerns me is about to change. Can I tell somebody, it's not going to be bad all the time. God is going to turn it around. Everybody knows that my favorite song, and everybody knows that I, I love my little slogan that God will turn it around. It may look bad today, but in a twinkling of an eye, God can just change your life over for good. I dare somebody to put their hands together and give God a praise. Glory be to God. Clap your hands and give him a shout of praise. Praise God. And let me just go on very quickly with the message. The Bible said none could interpret. Oh, come on, somebody. Then spake the chief butler unto Pharaoh, saying, I remember, oh God, saying, I do remember my thoughts this day. The Bible said, and Pharaoh was wroth with his servants and, and put me inward in the captain of the guard's house, both me and the chief baker. And he dreamed a dream in one night. And he and we dreamed each man according to the interpretation of his dream. And to cut a long story short, the Bible said nobody within the kingdom was able to interpret Pharaoh's dream. And not only that, but the word of God says that God caused Pharaoh to have two dreams. One more time, one seven, um, God calls her, eat a seven plump cows. And Pharaoh, again, the Bible said he was disturbed by the time he woke up in the morning. Come on, somebody. And again, Pharaoh had another dream. Oh, come on, somebody, where the grains are replaced by seven scorched ears. Oh, come on. Come on, when God get ready to move, he will just make the impossible possible. And another time, the Bible said, again, a Pharaoh was disturbed the next morning and called the magicians again. But this time, tell the neighbor, this time, they were unable. Finally, <clears throat> finally, the Bible said, Joseph will get this chance in front of Pharaoh. And so Pharaoh heard about Joseph and he pulled him out of the dungeon. 
And the word of God says, easily thrown. Oh, glory be to God. When, 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 when Joseph realized uh, that Pharaoh had called him. I don't, I, I don't know about you, but the word of God says that Joseph went into the shower. Come on, somebody. Uh, he, he changed his clothing and he put on clean clothes. Uh, and the word of God says he marched in front of the leader of Egypt. Glory be to God. Ah, uh, God Almighty. He took off uh, all his prison clothes. Uh, uh, I, I can't just imagine. I can't just imagine Joseph. He may, maybe he was wearing some orange stripes or, or some black and white stripes. Oh, and, and at the time when they called him, the word of God says he changed his garment. He washed up. He cleaned. He he cleaned up himself and he changed his clothes because he was about to present himself to the king, the king which is called Pharaoh. Let me tell you something quickly. Any time God is about to do the exceedingly and the Abundantly, our life will change for good immediately. Come on, somebody, give him praise. I love this passage of scripture because as we go down a little bit in chapter 41, we show all, all these things, bad things really do work out for good. Somebody give him praise. Amen. Praise. So the Bible said. Joseph hastily thrown himself into the shower, given some clean clothes, and marched in front of the leader of Egypt. And let me let me just pause right here to tell you that anytime God is about to do something extraordinary for you, let me tell you that your life will change just instantly from bad to good. Anytime that God put in his appearance uh, in any circumstance, you can you can rest assured that something is about to change. So in chapter 41, it shows us that all these bad things really do work out for good. Sometimes every month come up with different challenges. Many of us are expecting something different in the month of March, but here comes March Madness with COVID-19. Can I talk to you a little bit? Come on, somebody. Come on. And as April steps in, we are looking for something different. But I told you the last time, and I want to tell you again, that God will turn this thing around so that he can be glorified. Come on, somebody. Come on, shake up in your seat and give him a praise. We are expecting that all our mourning will turn into dancing. All our debts will be paid off. Come on, somebody. And we are going to go from the bottom to the top. And can I easily say to you that nothing and no one can stop you from rising to greatness. Bounce your name and tell your neighbor, I'm destined for greatness. Turn to somebody behind you and say, I'm pressing up the upward way. New eyes I'm gaining every day. Can I tell somebody, still praying as I onward bound, just the Lord plant my feet. And I your crown, it's about to get better. Mm. And so the Bible said in verse 15, And Pharaoh said to Joseph, I dreamt a dream, and there is none that can interpret it. And I have heard say to thee that thou canst understand a dream to interpret it. And Joseph answered Pharaoh, saying, It is not in me. God shall give Pharaoh an answer of peace. I can picture Pharaoh shooting a glare. Oh, looking at his, looking at his armor bearer, looking at his cup bearer. When Joseph says he can't do it, but Joseph has more to say. He says, I can't do it, but God can. Tell your neighbor, only God can. Oh, the president cannot stop this pandemic. Our prime minister cannot stop this pandemic. The minister of health cannot stop this pandemic, but God can. Tell somebody, only God can. Can. And so in verse 17, the Bible said, And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, In my dream, behold, I stood at the bank of the river. And Pharaoh began to explain to Joseph all oh, that he had dreamed. Come on, somebody. And Pharaoh tell him everything from start to finish. So God does indeed reveal the meaning of the dream to Joseph. And the Bible said, it seems to be bad news. But God will send the seven good years of plenty. But they will immediately be followed by seven terrible years of famine. Take note that Joseph is, is very careful to attribute all this to God. 
God. He has made up in his mind and it will not change everything. He says, but God will cause this to happen. God will change it. God will carry it through. Amen, somebody. Give him a praise. Glory be to God. I, 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 come, to, I come to give God a praise. I, I, come to, I come to praise the Lord with everything that I have. I come to bless his holy name. Come on, somebody. It doesn't matter, hallelujah, how many bad dreams you got. It doesn't matter how it look. It doesn't matter what it looks like or what it feels like. If God says, I'm going to turn your years of famine into years of reaping, God can. If God says, I'm going to bring you from the bottom to the top, God can. If God is going to take you from a lonely place, of lowly bar and put you to eat at the king's table God can can I encourage you it doesn't matter what is facing you it doesn't matter what is facing your, your family God can do the impossible is the reward of them that diligently seek you come on somebody he took Joseph from the dungeon all of a sudden Joseph was prime minister in Egypt oh God has a plan come on somebody Nothing just happened when you're destined for greatness. Who can stop you? When you're destined for greatness, who can hinder you? When you're destined for greatness, you may go through some difficult moments, but better is on before. Better days are coming. Oh, come on to somebody. So let me just, let, let, let me quickly tell you something. The, 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 the characters in the Bible, they're not just there. They're not just there for us to just glance over and say, oh, these men and women, they were not real. They were very much real. Come on. The stories are there to encourage us, to edify us, and to bring us into fullness of God's goodness and God's grace to each and every one of us. From nothing to something. From the least to the greatest. The word of God says that Joseph served in Pharaoh's kingdom. I don't want to be long with you. I just stopped by to encourage you just for a few minutes. I don't want to be long. I don't intend to be very long. I just come to encourage you. Do not lose hope. Do not give up on God. God has not given up on you. He is able. The word of God, I was to believe that Joseph ruled Pharaoh's kingdom. He, 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 he planned everything, he managed everything, and he was in charge of Pharaoh's kingdom. I want you to stay tuned because this is just part one. I will be coming back with part two when Joseph brothers appeared unto him. And that's the part I love. So this is only part, two, part one. Just stay tuned. God bless you. Have a super fantastic day. And we will meet again soon. Amen. <laughs>